Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, so in this session, uh, we'll be looking at using app only model uh, with Microsoft Graph API support planner. Uh, with that, I hope that this presentation goes according to the plan. Uh, right, so just uh, quickly about myself. My name is Anoop. Uh, I'm a Microsoft MVP and a developer at a company called Content and Cloud. Here are the various links that, uh, that I use for my uh, social media platforms. You can follow me on those if needed. OK, so uh, let's start with the first slide, which is about Microsoft Graph. And I'm sure everyone knows about Microsoft Graph. Um, so I've just taken these two sentences from the uh, uh, docs.microsoft.com. So Microsoft Graph is uh, the gateway to data and intelligence in Microsoft 365. Uh, and it provides uh, a programmability model that we can use to access tremendous amount of data in Microsoft 365, Windows, and enterprise mobility and security. Uh, in today's demo, we'll be focusing on getting Microsoft 365 data using Microsoft Graph. So this slide is about interacting with Microsoft Graph. On the left side, uh, we've got an extra external app. So this is the app that we will be building. And uh, in order to access Microsoft 365 data, which is on the right side, that Microsoft 365 data can be anything, be it in SharePoint or Planner or anything else, Outlook, uh, Calendar, whatnot. So for our external app to access Microsoft 365 data, we need Microsoft Graph. And the process is quite straightforward. Our external app uh, asks Microsoft, Microsoft Graph to get us the data from Microsoft 365. Uh, Microsoft Graph verifies that uh, everything with the external app is correct, as in it has got the required permissions and the client ID secrets and certificates. Everything is proper. Uh, if, if all of that is OK, Microsoft Graph will get the data from Microsoft 365 uh, and then pass that back to our external app. So th there are several types of apps uh, we can develop. Uh, one of such apps is GitHub. Uh, so as you can see on the left side, we've got GitHub. And if GitHub has to access Microsoft 365 data, then we can use Microsoft Graph and then get the data. And that's what we'll be looking at today. In particular, uh, we'll be looking at interacting with the planner from GitHub. So what uh, we'll do is uh, we'll use Microsoft Graph to interact with Planner and then pass that data back to GitHub. So uh, in order to do that, what we'll do is uh, we'll look at the repository in GitHub and that repository on, on GitHub will have a GitHub workflow and this workflow uh, runs on a pull request. So when, when there is a pull request, say on the main branch, uh, this particular GitHub workflow will run, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And then that workflow calls something called as a GitHub action. And that GitHub action has some code which passes the data to Microsoft Graph. And then Microsoft Graph, uh, once it gets the data from, from this GitHub action, it verifies the authentication, say, uh, you know, the client ID and secret will be passed and the permissions. Uh, uh, so with that, Microsoft Graph will uh, verify that the app has got uh, proper permissions. And if that is the case, then uh, Microsoft Graph issues an instruction uh, to create a planner task. And once that is done, uh, we can see the planner task uh, in the planner and users can interact with that task. So this is just one example scenario of how we can use uh, Microsoft Graph uh, in order to interact with planner tasks. And in this case, the application we are using is GitHub, but that can be any other application as well. All right. With that in mind, let's uh, take a look at the demo. So let me set up the scene here. Uh, what I have here is a user called Megan Bowen obviously. Uh, so, uh, and I have opened uh, a GitHub repository, which is aptly named as Workflow Test. Um, so myself and Megan are the owners of this repository. Now what I'll do is I have opened this repository as Megan. I'll switch to the develop branch and then make a small change uh, and I create a pull request. So let's do that. What I'll do is I'll just edit uh, the readme 
and then uh, you know this is oh, demo add some nice text here and then commit that change uh, and then if I go back to the uh, repository it says that uh, the dev branch has been changed so I can create a pull request so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, create a pull request and then give it a nice title and a nice description and create that pull request right now what this will do is this will trigger a workflow uh, so for that what i'll do is i'll just switch uh, to my github account uh, and then open the same repository and then uh, i'll just go in, on to actions and we can see that uh, the workflow has triggered and it is running. Now what this workflow will do is, uh, like I showed you in the slide earlier, it calls a GitHub action, which then goes ahead and creates the task. So as you can see over here, um, if I just zoom in a bit, the workflow calls a GitHub action called MS Craft Create Task, and that task goes ahead and uh, you know creates a task in, in the planner. Now, if we look at the planner plan itself, so here's the uh, planner plan. And as you can see over here, uh, there's a bucket called as pull request. And in that bucket, a new task has been created, uh, which says uh, review the pull request. And then if I open that, it has got the title of the pull request, and it also has got the, uh, the link to the pull request. So as the owner of this repository, um, you know, I have a task in my planner and then I can click on that link. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, look at that pull request and go ahead and, uh, you know, either uh, uh, merge the pull request or close or, or take any other action. In this case, I'll just go ahead and merge the pull request. And then uh, once that is done, I go back to my planner plan and then say uh, completed. So th that's the uh, simple use case uh, that, that we have here. Um, now, just before showing you the code, uh, I wanted to show you that we've, we've got an app registration in Azure, and in that app registration, if I zoom in a bit, um, that particular app has got tasks.retrite.all permission, and um, because it, uh, we'll be using this permission in order to uh, create tasks in the planner. With that in mind, let me go back to the slides again. So just to recap, uh, uh, what we saw was a GitHub workflow, which triggered on pull request, and that called a GitHub action, which then uh, passed the data to Microsoft Graph. Uh, Microsoft uh, Graph uh, then went ahead and created a task in the planner. Now, uh, our main focus here is the GitHub action, which is used to call Microsoft Graph. Uh, that's the one which we saw run earlier in the workflow. So that particular GitHub action uh, is nothing but a Node.js uh, project. So let's have a look at the code of that and uh, you know, and see how the task gets created. Okay, so uh, what you're seeing on the screen now is the code of that GitHub action. The link for this will be shared uh, uh, soon. Uh, uh, I, I have a slide for that uh, towards the end. Uh, so this particular GitHub action, uh, you know, if you see on the right side, uh, it's, you know, it's a no normal uh, Node.js project. We've, we've got our source uh, folder and dist and lib. So it's just, just like a normal Node.js project that you have. Uh, I have focused here on the package.json file, and we are using two particular packages here. One is Azure slash msal node, and the other one is Microsoft slash Microsoft Graph Client. These two packages are needed in order to uh, uh, interact with Microsoft Graph. Okay. So this particular GitHub action has three main files, uh, the auth.ts, graph.ts, and main.ts. Uh, all the code that I'll be showing you is, will be in these three main files. Right. So first, firstly, when the GitHub action triggers, uh, what we do is uh, we pass certain details to this GitHub action. So uh, I have highlighted all the details over here. 
uh, what I'll just do is I'll quickly show you the workflow as to how we are passing this data so that uh, it'll, it'll, it'll all make sense. So if I just go back to the workflow that we saw earlier, it was this one, and uh, we saw that uh, you know the the action was called over here, and then all the details were passed. So if, if I quickly show you the workflow itself, sorry, just this one. So uh, we can see here that um, we call this particular action, and then pass all the details like the client ID, client secret, the tenant ID, the plan, the bucket, and uh, the different uh, the title and the user ID. Uh, to whom the task must be assigned. So from the workflow, we are calling this particular GitHub action. Uh, now, if I go back to the slides again, uh, so when the GitHub action is called, uh, we get all the details uh, from the workflow, and then what we do is we parse all those details within these different variables. Once that is done, uh, we create a new object for graph. Uh, when we call that code, what happens is, uh, it just runs the constructor in the graph.ds file uh, with the client ID secret and the tenant ID. That goes ahead and creates a new object uh, of the auth uh, class. And over here in the constructor of auth.ds, uh, we can see that we are uh, you know, creating a confidential client application. Now, you might have seen uh, this particular code in in various samples that are provided by Microsoft uh, on how to use uh, Microsoft Graph. Uh, so I have just you know, taken this code from one of those samples. All we are doing here is creating an object of confidential client application. Once that is done, uh, we go back to the main.ts file. Here we create an object of the type planner task. In this, uh, we have the plan ID, the bucket ID, the due date, whom, to whom it must be assigned, and the priority. Now, uh, and then uh, once we have that task object, we pass it to the graph.createTask method. What does this do? Uh, as per the name, it creates the task, but before that, it has to get the graph client. So we have this uh, function called as get client, and the get cl uh, client function, uh, we, uh, you know, it first has to get the access token. In order to get the access token, what we do here is, uh, you know, we, we compose uh, the client credential request per first in which we pass the scope, which is graph.com slash dot default, and then we set skip cache as true. Uh, this is optional. If we set it to true, then it will skip the token cache on every request. We can set it to false as well based on the requirement. Uh, and then uh, what we do is we call this important method, which is acquire token by client credential. Uh, now, that is part of the MSAL library, uh, and Microsoft have done all the hard work on uh, you know, writing that method. So all we have to do is just call that method, and then uh, with that, we get the access token. And then once we have the access token, uh, what we do is uh, uh, we, we create the uh, graph client. Uh, so for that, we, uh, in order to do that, we have to firstly create the auth provider, and then uh, as you can see over here, we then just call the client dot init method and pass in the auth provider to that. Now, this is part of the Microsoft Graph client library that we saw earlier in the package.json. Right. With that, we have the graph client. Once we have the graph client, uh, all we have to do is just call the graph API uh, endpoint uh, in order to create, create a planner task. In this case, it is slash planner slash tasks and uh, we post the task object that we saw earlier. And once that is done, the Graph API goes ahead and creates the task in the planner. So that was the code. Uh, as you saw, it was very simple. Uh, we, we just called Microsoft Graph in order to create a task. All right, so in summary, uh, uh, Microsoft Graph Planner API now has app-only permissions. This was, I think, done a couple of months back. Uh, it already had delegated uh, permissions, but there was a request for app-only permissions, and Microsoft have now provided us that with that. Um, and in order to use this, we have to create an Azure AD app registration, and that particular app registration needs to needs to have tasks dot uh, read dot all permission if we are only 
uh, you know, doing read activities. Uh, if you want to do read and write activities, then the permission is tasks.readwrite.all. Uh, and we saw a scenario using GitHub in which a GitHub action uh, was used to create a task. And then that particular uh, GitHub action was called by a workflow which runs on pull request. And uh, I'm sure there, there will be other scenarios in which this can be used in order to create tasks in, in a planner. Uh, here are some uh, links that were used as part of this demo, and I see them in the chat already. And with that, I pass it back to you, David. Thanks. Awesome, Anup. Yeah, this is really, really cool. I, again, I love these better together scenarios that show how we can use the technologies that we all use together in a variety of ways. So thank you for highlighting that. Those links are in the chat. Thank you.